Ah, uh -huh. not kill get into the battle buddy shit. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get into the battle buddy stuff. So everybody on me. Or this man is on me. still a helmet. Yeah, he's still a helmet What's floating up, around. This big man want to respawn. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna need a helmet on the floor. That was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Okay, so in a combat situation, the most important thing to have is a battle buddy. A battle buddy is essentially an individual who buddies up with you, stays with you in a combat situation, looks out for you, um, and is always there for when you need to breach and clear a room. Never, ever, ever breach and clear a building or go off by yourself in any combat situation whatsoever. If you do that, consequences can be dire. Not only will I yell at you and I will go full-blown Smokey Bear on your ass and I will bring in two knife hands, not one, um, you will be knocked unconscious if you are caught with your ass out by yourself in a building. No one will know that you've been knocked out and no one will probably come and find you in the process and you will be killed. And in the worst scenario, you may be PK, permanently killed, which is not good on my record. So, to avoid this, you will be given a battle buddy. Battle buddies are not permanent. In any situation, you may, have, you may just look to the person next to you as your battle buddy. That's the purpose of it. So, what we're going to do, we're going to have... Nathan and Kirk, you guys are going to be battle buddies, and Wells, Aid, you two are going to be battle buddies. Actually, I got any. Yeah, you two are going to be battle buddies. So what's buddy. going to happen is that I am hey, Kirk. Is, uh, buddy team Rush. Uh, you're going to pick the person who's next to you, probably they the play war, I just assigned, war after this. you're going to move towards the target in a leap hey, frog Wilson, I've tried, uh... You need to hold your ground, look where your contacts are, and see where the rest of your friend, uh, where the rest of your fire team is. If you are the person who is all the way up the front, you do not need to move. You need to wait for everybody else in the back to catch up to your position. Do you understand? I gunny. I gunny. I gunny. I gunny. Come on. I Let's gunny. go, people. I don't want to be talking to myself all day or repeating myself. I need you guys to acknowledge what I am telling you, so I do not need to do this shit again. Okay, so. Uh, I want everybody to get on a line, shoulder to shoulder to each other, facing to the northeast. Really quick, Kenny, can I add one more thing? Sure, go ahead, just say it while everybody's getting on line. On line. Let's go, there you go. While you guys are pushing up to the next position that you need to drop at, you're gonna be, you're gonna be, like, jogging pace, right? But you're gonna wanna be reloading as you're going, because when you drop, you're gonna be providing cover fire for the people behind you, so that they can move up. You do not want to end up dropping, running out of ammo, and not being able to cover the people that are behind you. Because then, guess what? They die, and then you're in trouble, because you're the one that didn't keep them alive. Do you really want that on your conscience today? Or tomorrow, or any day? What if we yeah. don't have a conscience, sir? <laughs> uh, do you be like me, Kurt, the cannibal? Daily doses of crowns. You don't want to be like Kurt. Yep. No, Kirk, so, if you don't have that, then you end up like Kurt, and Kurt just... Everybody hates Kurt, except for me. I love Kurt. Because I eat people, okay? I'll he also eats crayons. So, that do you want to be like Kurt? Uh, also, <laughs> one thing to take note, real quick, just hold your reward, don't move around, just look. I want you to acknowledge something real quick. What's wrong with this picture? We're in a combat situation, alright? We're about to move forward to the enemy's position. We are, however, on a line. What is oh, a line is not actually a line. No, that's not what I'm concerned about. We're in a line. Yeah, Let's say I throw a frag distance. grenade right here. What'll happen? Uh, we're all dead. Mm -hmm. Well, at least you three are. Oh, definitely you three. So what What am I looking for here? Nathan's got the idea. Gunny. It looks like you guys are sort of get the idea. What's it called? What's it called? I'm looking for a word. 
Spacing. Spacing. There you go. Spacing. You guys need to keep your spacing with each other. Do not want to have three people ass yeet to each other and then one fucking frag comes in and yeets the entire fucking squad. That's not what I want. So, in order to avoid this, when you get on a line, you need to make sure that you keep dispersion with someone. Alright? So if someone gets right up next to you, tell them you're not into that gay shit and tell them to go away. Okay? Hi, <laughs> Gunny. Hi, Gunny. Hey, Holson, can so, I uh, Let me see. Uh, there we go. Permanent. They, battle buddies are never permanent. In fact, if your battle buddy, battle buddy gets hit, and uh, you don't have one, well, that's unfortunate for you. Find you're going to need to find another battle buddy. And if you don't got one, well, then I guess you just got to push up with everybody else. Kind of sucks to suck. So let's try that again. Everybody consolidate. Consolidate to the person who's furthest in the front. Oh, oh, my, God. oh my God. Who the fuck just turned their back? They're dead. Come on. Don't be shy. Push up, Kirk. You're not going to get shot at the moment. You will get shot soon. Facing. Facing. Did I say to move up? Come up. Okay, here we go. All right, now, fire team, or sorry, we're going to do a uh, buddy team rush again. So. Nathan Wells, you push first. Roger. Oh, negative. All right. Mistake. You're, you're missing the point here. You're part of the fire team, okay? You need to Got pick it. a buddy to your left or to your right. Preferably the person who's right here next to you. You're going to be his buddy, okay? Hey, so you need to cover or you need to push. You need to communicate with your buddy. Kirk, gold is on your left because fucking Nathan's already taken by Vespade. That's that's oh. how he likes his gold diggers, okay? <sighs> okay, I thought part of Nathan got shot. Sometimes shit fucking doesn't work out the way you want it to in a combat situation. And everything that's that you were fine. trained with kind of gets thrown out the window. So you need to adjust and adapt to your situation. Improvise, right? adapt, overcome. You improvise, exactly. So you guys are going to be pushing forward. You need a buddy. Someone needs to cover you or you need to cover him. Leapfrog, that's how it works. Okay, let's try again from the top. Okay, fire team leaders just called for a buddy team rush to the east. Go ahead. Nathan, you push, I'll hold. Wells, go ahead and push. Roger. That's good, that's far enough. There you go, not too far. There you go. Did you hear set. a set? Good set, go. Here, Kurt, fire off your Nathan. take off yeah, fire off your weapon in the air a couple of times too. Give him a little simulation. Gilston, go ahead. Moving. Consolidate. Consolidate. Stop moving. Move up, Wells. Move up to the line. It's not moving. Consolidate, people. Consolidate. Nathan. Move to the person all the way in the front. Back. Okay, you two need to move up to the two people who are furthest up front. There you go. There you go. Up there. there you go. On a line. Okay, cease fire. Cease fire. Cease fire. Cease fire. Okay. Excellent. There you go. All right, there's a little too much space. So you two need to move over to the right a little bit more just to close up the gap. Excellent work. You guys understand how battle buddies and battle, uh, and rebounding off of your buddy works? Yes. Excellent work. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I actually forgot to teach you some terminology that needs to be utilized in a combat situation. Uh, oh, and I also forgot for those who don't know how to utilize the radio as well. Oh, I can do that. That's in the handbook, Gunny. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get that set too. Speaking of handbook, you guys should definitely go and at least skim that so that you know at least a little bit about what we do. Well, I am proud of you. Alright, so... I'm gonna go ahead and do the... Yes, for now. Everybody can hear me, or sorry, everybody can hear me, yes? I got it. Yes, excellent work. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do a quick review over the radio so we can get into the other things more effectively. Um, so, first things first, to get out your radio, you're going to hit Control-P. Hit Control-P, you're going to see your radio. You're going to see 
on the radio frequency, C142, or sorry, you're going to see C1, whatever radio frequency you have. So for your channel 1, you're going to set your radio frequency. So you're going to highlight over the radio frequency, and you're going to set it to 420. You're going to go down. You're going to see ENT. You're going to click that. That says Set Frequency. Now that your frequency is set, you should be able to hit caps lock, and I should be able to hear you over the radio. So go ahead, do a radio test. All right, one more radio, again. Right, radio I'm check. Charlie. 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 Unbound. Radio check. Oh, go, good. Name it Charlie. Name right. Charlie, loud and clear. So, what's next is some features that can be utilized if you have more than one channel. So, in your channel one, go to the bottom left corner of your buttons. What's called stereo settings. Set your channel one frequency to the left side of your ear. So, left only. It should pop popping up in the bottom right corner of your screen to left only. And have whenever you left only? Yeah, have yep. it set to left only. That way you can identify that it is your channel one that you're hearing from. Um, let's see. Secondly, another thing is in the bottom right corner, you're going to see a big button that says free, plus and minus over it. You're going to click on next channel, and see channel one. What you're going to do now is go to the buttons at the bottom with an arrow pointing right. You're going to, sorry, uh, scratch last with an arrow pointing left. You're going to click that. It's going to say set additional channel. You're going to click that button. Now you should see A2. stands for additional channel. Once you have that set, set your radio frequency to 1, 1, 1, three ones. Make sure you hit set frequency or the ENT button. Once that's set, you're going to go to back to your PRE button, and you're going to click the minus button. If you don't click that button, you're going to be stuck on that channel frequency, and your additional channel frequency for both your caps lock and your T button. You don't want that. You want to make sure that you can still use your 420 radio frequency in your channel 1. So once you're back at channel 1, and you hit escape, you should still have 420 when you hit caps lock. So everybody radio check. Radio, radio check. check. Radio check. Now, if you hit T, you should be able to use your additional channel. So go ahead and try that. Radio, radio check. check. Radio check. Excellent. Now, to also identify if it, if your additional channel, Bad sorry, to make sure that you can identify your additional channel, you can set your A2 channel to your right ear, the same way you did with your channel 1 for your stereo settings. So you can set that to your right only ear. That way, any traffic that comes in, your left ear is your channel 1 radio frequency of 420. Any information that comes in is your additional channel to your right ear. Sorry, I'll see. Sorry. <clears throat> radio check. Name it Charlie. Radio check. Name it Charlie. Okay. Um, you should also probably make sure that your additional channel is set to... Uh, the right ear, so that you can differentiate them. I don't know if... You... One thing you need to note about the radio is that it's not to be abused. You should still be relaying information verbally instead of over the radio. It gets rather annoying for your fire team leader if he has to hear both communications from personal radio to communicate with his said fire team than communicating with the squad leader, which mainly has more important information than whatever fucking dribble comes out of your mouth about I stubbed my toe on a fucking rock. Okay, no one needs to hear about that shit. Only important information, such as contacts, uh, approaching a position, or if you are, God forbid, too far away from your fire team leader that he can hear you, which is a specific problem that should never happen. You should be, always be within yelling distance of your fire team leader. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and continue what we were doing before with the rebounding shit. So make sure you guys are back on a line again so we can continue the rest of the training.